telegram all the way from Rose. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Dear Doc Richard at the clinic, please eat this soup or I'll bust your face. Oh, I love Rose. Very clever. My first day as acting chief of staff again, and I think I got every emergency in the world going on. I got a young doctor who thinks he's uh, Tom Dooley. Maybe Einstein or St. Francis, I guess, is a possibility for that. Then I have this big accident today. Everybody wants me to help him on that. In the middle of that, I got a, a water pipe that burst down in the supply room. I don't know what it's like telling everybody what to do here and putting everything in place. Pretty complicated, I'd say. Complicated, you got it. I'm just trying to uncomplicate my life. I think I've made it more complicated than ever. I'm not only the senior cardiologist. I am acting chief of staff. I run this clinic, and I'm Heather's guardian. I think that's enough for anyone now, don't you? Yeah, I just don't know if soup's gonna be enough to top off a day like that. Oh, yes, it is. This is very nice. Thank you. I think I've been waiting for some poor soul to come in here so I could just bombard on I'm sorry for doing that. No, what's sorry? Come on, if you had a bad day, you had a bad day. Well, at least I got it off my chest, and I appreciate you being here to listen to me. Well, I've been pretty good at that. Yeah, I guess you are. How is Heather? Uh, it's not Heather, it's me. I took her to the disco again tonight, and the deputy sheriff that was on duty the night of the accident was there, and the only thing he recognized about Heather was that she was a good dancer, so that all fell through. I'm sorry about that. I, I was really sure that he was going to be able to identify. Oh, what the heck am I saying? I don't know what I feel about Heather anymore. Sure, don't say that. You had her well, Peg, from the very beginning. Yeah, well, I thought so, too. Fine. But she's the disarming person. I mean, she she really, she's... You're talking about a beautiful woman that I like being around, who in my spare time I am, trying to prove murder to another friend of mine. Now, you want your breaking point? You'll find a good one right in the middle of there. Oh. Tonight, she kisses me goodnight. You felt something. Is that... I felt something. I, uh, I, I gotta tell you, I, I know Heather. I think I know her better than you do. I know how she operates. I'm responsible for Heather, but also I think that gives me a responsibility to warn other people about her. And don't lose sight of one thing. Please don't. And that's what she did to Jeff. Remember what she did. I do Jeff. remember it all the time. Sometimes I feel like I'm caught in the middle of a vice and it's squeezing in on me. The next time I'm on the rack being stretched out the other way. Oh, man, I just wish we could get the evidence we need on Heather. Or I wish Heather would just not be here. Is there, there's something else you want to say? Yes, yes, oh, yes. What? Tell me. I want to ask you a question. Shoot. Uh, medically speaking, what does it mean medically, when someone is criminally insane. I can't give you an exact definition. I'd, I'd have to take that out of a book. The books are back at my office in the hospital. Well, can you give me a working definition? Well, I give you some loose terms, yeah. It's basically anyone that uh, doesn't have the capability, you know, the capacity to discern the wrongness of an act. In other words, they, they cannot be held criminally responsible for the act if it's due to a mental illness, which is synonymous with mental health, mental illness, um, psychosis. Yeah, whole big mouthful of words. Well, yeah, in practical application, it gets even more complicated than that. How so? Because you have to be able to determine if that particular person fits the description, the definition. How come? What well, has to be done? Joe, it's a very long process. I mean, there are tests, there's evaluation, there's a review of the psychiatric board. This all has to do with Heather, doesn't it? Man, I just can't stand the thought of her being locked up in a snake pit for the rest of her life. Joe, that is not your responsibility and never will be. It is if I prove that she murdered Diana Taylor. One minute I think she did it, the next minute... I don't know what I think, man. What's the matter with me? I would say Heather's getting to you. That's what's the matter. Well, I don't want her to get to me. But... I want... I want Ramsey to come up with the evidence he needs to uh, prove that uh, there was two nurses there in Diana's apartment the night of the murder. Well, he said he would, he will. 
I know, but everything keeps shifting in between times. I'm not kidding, man. I mean, one minute the evidence points to the fact that Heather did it. And the next instant, it, it, it's inconceivable that Heather could be capable of committing a murder of any kind. Joe, I think maybe you're forgetting. Heather's mother doesn't trust her. I know. She has to be watched every minute. I know. Look, if she doesn't trust her, you can't. That's you're scaring me. I have a hunch that she might be able to blind you to whatever evidence that you or Ramsey comes up with. Well, I gotta tell you, it's not getting any easier. Maybe you ought to take a little different tack. Say, a doctor-patient relationship. What do you mean? Well, a doctor has to be objective. We can't become involved. We can have no emotional attachment. If we do, we lose our objectivity. I'd think about that if I were you. Might give you a much more effective means of dealing with it. Yeah, you done? Yeah, yeah. So, thank you very much. Yeah, great. Yeah, but we didn't eat crackers. My crackers, I can see. Out with you. I'm not a hat. I spend my life in an institution or another, and they try to pass the bar and say, you think medical school is 